many of you would consider yourself an artist? If I raise a hand. Okay. Not, not bad. It's more than I normally get. <laughs> so I'm done. I can. <laughs> um, my journey, when I think back, starts probably when I was three or four years old. And I think as an artist, we all kind of started at the same place. And my parents at the time when they wanted to occupy my time would set this book in front of me about eight inches wide by 12 inches tall. I'd open it up and there are these black and white drawings. And they set a box of Crayola crayons next to me and they said, color. And so I did that. And I was very invested in it. And I don't think at the time, and still to this day, I haven't clinically been diagnosed with OCD. But I think that that intuition of me to commit to something and not waver started there. And I would take out the crayon. Red was my favorite color at the time. Um, purple is now my favorite color. <laughs> And I would meticulously outline the inside edge of all the spaces in a deep, deep crayon color. And then I would lightly shade the inside uniformly. And if I ever varied outside of the line, I did everything in my power to go back and fix it. I would take black and try to make the outline even stronger to cover it up. And my parents saw this and as literally a three, four, five-year-old, they were like, this, you're, this is, you have a talent. <laughs> and as the oldest sibling, I was very committed to making my parents proud. And so I took that to heart and everything I did, I wanted to make sure that I had that reaction from them. So we fast forward to high school. I was known as a science kid, physics, math, chemistry, numbers were my thing. But I always loved to draw, to color. I loved music, I loved film. And as I went through high school, I realized that looking back, that most of the classes that I took in the arts were about teaching a skill. Can you do a sketch of this to make it look realistic? Can you paint this to make it look like a photo? In band, can you play this music just as it's supposed to be played? But there was never an emphasis on creating something of my own. It was the line that I was working in in school was this idea of here's the thing that you need to do, now go do it. Maybe sometimes in English class you'd write a paper but again, there was a direction that you were given and you had to make a certain point and there wasn't a lot of wavering there of the ability to just create something from nothing. So I went into college as a physics pre-med major as my parents wanted and as I wanted at the time. And the arts were the hobby. I dabbled in guitar, I would make videos on my own, but it was never intended to be more than that. And then one day, I was sitting in my dorm room, just strumming my guitar, trying to play a song of the era, whether I'm blues traveler or something of that ilk. And all of a sudden, I decided, like, I'm going to play that chord progression in reverse. And all of a sudden, it was something new. It was something that I hadn't heard before. It wasn't something that I was trying to play because I was trying to emulate something. It was something that I, in that moment, as an 18 year old in a upper bunk of a loft bed created. So then I was like, well, why can't I do this with any of these arts that I've loved for so long? And so I found out that there just happened to be a cinema department on my campus and I wandered down the hill and I knocked on two doors. One was empty, the other had the chairman of the department of two. And after a two hour conversation, we walked to the registrar's office and all of a sudden I'm a cinema major. <laughs> a couple weeks passed before I called my mom. And I just, it was last Christmas, found out that she still to this day 
almost 20 years later, remembers exactly what she was wearing <laughs> when she picked up the phone that day. I've already forgotten, so I won't tell you what it was. So then I go through my college career. My, towards the end of my junior year, we had our annual film festival. And the film festival was not a competition. It was where people in the workshop film program who had gone through all the coursework were able to contribute films and they'd be screened on campus and people would come out and applaud and appreciate the work and time that they put into those productions. And this was at a time when, for context, and this dates me, I only had one video production class in college. So everything else I did was on actual film, celluloid, eight millimeter, 16 millimeter, and the like. And I wasn't in the workshop program that year, but I had friends that were, that were sophomores, and they asked if I would act in one of their films. And I said, sure, I'll help however I can. I'm all about it. So I went, I was on camera, production went swimmingly, I got to see early cuts, loved it, it was hilarious and endearing and warm and just a, a wonderful testament to the idea of storytelling. And then a week later, after the submissions were, were given to the festival, all of a sudden there were all these noises coming from the elder statesmen in the cinema department. This production was shot on video. It shouldn't be allowed to be in the film festival. And if you think about it, in both mediums, the final product is essentially the same. As uh, someone in the audience, you're sitting there, you're looking at a screen, there are still images rapidly flashing on the screen to simulate motion, and that's accompanied by an audio soundtrack of some sort, whether it's a recorded voice or music, etc. There's no difference in the final product, but just the process and the medium that it was worked in. And so I asked myself the question of why is this one seemingly considered art and the other not? And I came to the realization that, again, just like in high school, just like for most of our lives, this idea that art has to have a constraint. It has to have a boundary, a limit. Everything can't be art, because then what's art? But in my head, I didn't accept that. They both made sense. People need to be able to stretch beyond what those definitions are in order to create new things. That's, in essence, the core of any creative endeavor. So then I graduated. I spent the next seven years of my life touring the country working for a student film festival that was founded by a friend of mine that I went to that I grew up with in Ohio. And we traveled the country, six of us, in a van. We loaned out computers and cameras and gave college students the opportunity to tell their story. And it was through that process that all of this really formed in my mind. I was going to campuses, and out of 100 participating teams, maybe 25% came from the film department or communications department. But the majority of what we saw were people from the history department, the chemistry department, the physics department. And my initial thought was, oh, you know, this makes sense. The kids at Tech love this because they don't have an outlet for creativity. They're so focused on their coursework and numbers and, you know, that there's no ventilation shaft to get those creative ideas outside of them. So we're providing that. But after having conversations more and more, what I realized was that wasn't the case. That everything that they were doing had some sort of creativity embedded in it. Some sort of problem solving. Some sort of art. Whether it was a perfectly executed proof in a math class. Whether it was a friend in law school that was working through a defense summary. Everything that people do contains art. And so as I went through those years, that idea solidified itself. And my definition of what art is grew and evolved. And I can look at my mom, who's a physician. She 
you know, is an ob -gin. She delivers babies. She takes care of women's health needs. But when she's having those conversations about some not always awesome subject matter, when she's in surgery, there's an art to what she's doing. And I think that the idea that art is only art if it's intended to be art is false. And that the things that we do every day, every single one of us, contains art, is art. And I think that if you were to go and look back over the course of your life and be mindful of that moving forward, that you would see that we all, and you, are all artists. Thank you. <laughs>